Hello, you guys. Um, thanks for tuning in to a special segment today called Let's Talk About Relationships. Um, if you guys have been following my page at all, I have a some special segments that I do where I talk about relationships because I am a certified life and relationship coach. And so I like to squeeze those topics in there when I can. And today I have a returning guest, which I'm very excited to have him here, uh, Dr. James Reverend Tan. We did a show last week about his new book, um, Releasing the Miraculous, Walking in All Nine Gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you guys missed that show or you're interested in that book, please go back and check that out. And um, there's a link underneath in the comments to um, get a, um, to order the book off Amazon. <laughs> and so today what we'll be talking about in terms of relationships is understanding and overcoming loneliness. Um, this is a little bit of a passionate topic for me just because I was very lonely for many, many years. <laughs> I was lonely when I was married. I was lonely when I was single. I was lonely as a Christian. I was lonely before I became a Christian. And so this is something that I really have a lot of experience in. And I'm happy to kind of share and give some people my insights and things that I learned from that. And also to see what Dr. Reverend James Tan has to add, because he always has really, really insightful things to add to the topics that he tackles. And so um, to just kick this off, um, before I go into my experiences with loneliness, I would like to ask you, Dr. Reverend Tan. I, I don't know, should I say that all the time? Like Dr. Reverend James Tan, but I'll say Dr. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, I mean, have you had any experience or struggles with loneliness over the years? I know you travel a lot and things like that. Has that ever become an issue? You know, everything you said about being lonely when you were single, when you were married, when you were a believer, when you were, I, I identified with all of it. Mm. I identified with all of it. And I think it just speaks to the fact that people are made for companionship. Mm. 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 You know, I think it's as much of a need as food is a need. Mm. And so, yes, 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 and yes, I've experienced all of that. So there you go. If, if that was if that was a question, the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so for me, um, a lot of my loneliness, you know, I think like, like, again, it was in certain phases and different phases throughout my life. And it got to a point where I just thought that it was always going to be that way, that I would probably always feel that way to some degree. Um, you know, some a lot of times people... Um, you know, we, we all come to God for different reasons. And one of them sometimes has a lot to do with some underlying loneliness. And then sometimes we could be disappointed to find out that that doesn't always necessarily solve the problem. Becoming a Christian doesn't make loneliness always magically disappear. Okay. And so, um, so, but one of the major things with loneliness that I kind of want to um, focus on is that the problem with it, like you said, we were made for companionship, but yeah. being lonely for long periods of time can actually become very, very detrimental to your mental health, your spiritual health. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know for me, it got to a point where it was an actual physical pain, like that I would feel an agony uh, inside of me for for some, some sometimes just for some conversation. Um, and so that that's really a weak point that we can get to where the enemy will kind of exploit that. Um, and then another thing is that we can make bad decisions, you know, out of that because we're kind of, you know, trying to feed this feeling and we're not necessarily using the best judgment in doing that because we just want to kind of get rid of the loneliness. Um, so what are some of the negative um, repercussions that you think come from like prolonged loneliness? Well, I think... Um, anytime we accept a negative anything as a way of life, so if you accept loneliness or if you accept lack, if you accept um, uh, rejection, anytime we accept these things as a way of life, which of course, when anything is prolonged in time, your mental tendency, your emotional tendency is that this will never change, mm. right? Mm. And I think that once people get in that mode psychologically, 
and for sure spiritually. But psychologically, when you get in that mode, you don't even try looking for a way out. Mm. But but can I can I just real quickly point out that number one, God intends for us to have fellowship, and by fellowship I'm talking about different levels. There is there is casual fellowship, there is relational fellowship. There is spousal fellowship. So when I use the word fellowship, it's in a broad sense. Mm. But God intends for us to have fellowship, which is why the body of Christ, although it's one, is made up of many members. Mm. He brings us into that body. Mm. He brings us in that we can have fellowship. Mm. And again, that all the surprise because God intended it that way the Father the Son the Holy Ghost in the beginning said let us make man in our image mm, mm. So consider this even before mankind within the Trinity the Godhead there was some level of fellowship mm, mm. so fellowship and again like I said fellowship at different levels but fellowship from the very beginning was God's plan mm, mm. Anything that anytime we live outside of what God has planned for us, we hurt. Mm, exactly. You know, John, John, John Maxwell has a saying, and the saying is, stupid hurts. Mm. You know? Now, mm. I, don't, I do not in any way mean to say that people who are lonely are stupid. That's not what I mean at <laughs> yes. all. Mm. So don't any of you send Miss Stephanie any angry messages after this, because that's not what I was trying to say. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that when we don't, when we don't understand that God has a plan to deal with our need for companionship mm. and we assume that this is how it is now or how it, it's always going to be, it's going to hurt. Mm. Mm. And God has a plan. Yeah, exactly. And I like what you were saying about, you know, it being like within the Trinity, like, you know, of course, God is outside of time. But if right. you want to say the beginning, then he's the beginning. And it was always his um, fellowship is his idea. It's not really yeah. our idea. We didn't come up with it. Our desire for, for it does not come from us. It comes from God's design yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But one thing that I was thinking is, do you make any distinction between being alone and being lonely? Because I do think that those are two different things. What do you think? I do. Yes. Um, I I'll, I'll be honest with you, just because I usually am around people a lot, mm. I enjoy a bit of alone time. Mm. In fact, sometimes I enjoy my little bit of alone time maybe a little too much. <laughs> you know, there's nothing more than, like, like, you know, I just got back from a trip. Mm. And I love nothing better than just curling up on the sofa with a book and channel surfing or just nothing, you know. Mm. Mm. But... Being alone and being lonely are very different things. And here's why. Having quiet alone time is a choice. But can I say this? Being lonely involves a mindset. Exactly. Exactly. And it goes beyond relationships too. How do you and I know this? You and I know this because we all know people who are married and are lonely anyway. Exactly. Exactly. We all know people who are like that. Yeah. So when, 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 and here's why it's important to say that. It's important to say that because when you understand that, you don't try and resolve lonely ish, your loneliness issues by marrying someone. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Yeah, Miss Stephanie and I want to help anyone out there listening. If you're thinking that you, the way to resolve loneliness issues, or really any kind of relationship issues. If you mm. think that the way to resolve any kind of relationship issues, mm. whether it's sex, whether it's money, whether it's companionship, whether it's anything, and if you think that the answer to that is finding you someone and marrying that someone, mm. listen, that, that, that's a very short tier and you are going on a very long walk. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, wow. I have actually have a free webinar coming up next week where I'm going to discuss the hidden truth about relationships. And those are some of the points that I want to, you know, um, address because you should never, just like you said, and I'm going to say it again to, to really dig it in there. You should never think marriage is going to solve any of your problems. It does not. Yeah. Because yeah. As we all know, marriage amplifies who you are. Exactly. 
it don't, it doesn't, it, you know, the dating stage, you may be, you may be toned it down, look pretty and nice for a bit, but marriage will amplify who you are. And by the way, marriage will amplify who they are as well. Exactly. Because when you're single, you only have to deal with yourself. But when you're married, now you have to deal with the amplifying of your issues plus right. somebody else's right. issues. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyone is thinking, after I marry, I will change, or after I marry, they will change. Boy, you need to rethink that game plan because the truth of the matter is after you marry, nothing changes. It becomes amplified. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Just a whole different conversation, but yes. <laughs> I, think, I think that's another show. Maybe I'll have the honor of being invited back to do that one. But right yeah. now, we're talking yeah, absolutely. And so one of the things that I, you know, within my years of, and I totally agree with you, that is, I always say, and I have in my book, my first book, that being lonely is a state of mind. It's not a state of it being. Is. It's not really it where is. you are. It's where you think you are. And yeah. one of the thoughts behind that is not just so much of being physically alone, but really deep down feeling yeah. a lack of connection and like no one really cares. And so yeah. when you think that you can be a, in a room full of people and still yes. feel that with a, a lack of connection with them and feeling that no one generally cares for you on a very, very deep level. And those are really, in my opinion, where loneliness actually comes from. It's what you are believe about yourself and your relationship with other people. Yeah. You know, um, psychologically, here's how you would frame that psychologically. How we see life is really but a reflection of how we see ourselves. Exactly. Exactly. There really isn't more, there isn't any deeper truth than that. Mm. Mm. And, and how we view, and, and of course, when we say how we view life, we view truth how we view other people. Exactly. So when we view other people as suspicious and everything else, or however else it is, there's something about that that came from us. Exactly. why we see it that way. Exactly. And, and by the way, that's why you could put children, young kids, from a different country, from, from different races, from different nationalities. You can put them all in the same room, and they play together perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, let's just put that in there. without. That sounds like a whole other show in itself, but exactly. that's why. Mm. Because they see themselves as fun and joyful and want to play, and then they see everyone else the same way. Exactly. Exactly. So loneliness is a result at some point of seeing either one, I have something that needs fulfilling, mm. or two, they have something that I don't have and I need. Yeah, exactly. But it all comes back to the mind. It, it all does. It yeah. all does. Yeah. Now, the dangers of loneliness, I think one of the worst dangers of loneliness is, you talked about it just now, isolation. Mm. And I think isolation is when you accept that you will always be lonely and never anything else. Mm. Mm. No, the, the, I think that the two sides of loneliness are isolation or licentious living. Mm. Mm. Now, now, licentious living sounds like, a, sounds like an Old Testament Bible term. So let me define that real quick. By licentious living, what I mean is that you will do anything with anyone just for the sake of companionship. Exactly. And that's beyond, beyond just relational. Mm. I've seen people, I've counseled with people who do the same thing in an office work environment. They mm. just go along with the crowd. They let the crowd do and say however and whatever they want just because, just to try and fit in. Mm. So can I throw in a little bit of a Bible verse for you all, just for you to ponder and chew this? Mm. First Timothy 6 and verse 6 says, Now godliness with contentment is great gain. Mm. Mm. Now right there is the key, it's one of the keys for biblical, a, a biblical key for um, loneliness. Mm. Godliness, because godliness will keep you the right way. Mm. And contentment. Oh man, listen, you, listen, Miss Miss Stephanie, you need to do a show all by yourself and talk about the power of contentment. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I, I tell you, mm. contentment is recognizing that what you have is enough. It may mm. not be all you want. It may not be all you want, and it, sh it for sure isn't all you deserve. Mm. But what you have is enough for today. Mm. 
Hey, man. And when tomorrow rolls around, you I'll have what I need tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. Godliness, contentment, great gain. When you have godliness and contentment, listen, hey, single people, listen. When you're single, enjoy your singleness. <laughs> Absolutely. Once you, marry, once you marry, you will be just strolling out and doing whatever you want, whenever you want, with whomever. That's not going to happen no more because you got to. You got to protect and you got to Yeah. Right. Mm. Miss Stephanie can tell all of us. She's got five kids. She knows yeah, that's what exactly. Happen. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I don't even know what freedom is anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So godliness is contentment. If you're, if you have a godly perspective on life, and don't let that term godly put up images in your mind where you, you know, you're not allowed to wear makeup, you're not allowed to do your hair. And that's not. I'm, we're not talking about that. We're talking about just having a divine perspective of exactly. life. Exactly. Exactly. Right? But with contentment, I'm happy with life the way it is now. Mm. It may not be all I want, and I'm not satisfied, but I am content. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That that really takes, I think, uh, a level of maturity um, to get to that place. And I think yeah. sometimes people have to be patient with themselves and understand that it does take time to get to that place because it sounds... It seems easy. And I know even for me, like I said before, I've been a Christian for about 20 years. This was a process. Like I didn't just wake up one day and I was content or I did just, I mean, actually I did wake up, but it was still a process to get to the point where I could wake up one day and be content. And I could wake up and understand what loneliness was about and why I was feeling the way I was feeling. And so, you know, I guess I just want to urge people to be patient with yourself and allow God the time to let you work and get to that level because it does not necessarily happen overnight without the work being being put in to help you understand just what's actually going on underneath. And so that's so in speaking about what's going on underneath, loneliness is not always it's never what it looks like on the surface. And I think right. something right. that um, a lot of people um, misunderstand is that the feeling in and of itself is being created by you. So yes. if you believe you're lonely, then you will be lonely. And so that's why I was saying before, it's not just a state of mind. It's a, I mean, it's not, it's not a state of being, it's a state of mind. It's because that's what you're thinking. So if you think about the fact, like when you watch a scary movie, you feel scared, like there's something yes. there, but you know, there's nothing there. Or right. if you like, sometimes I play video games with my husband and we, we'll play a game where sometimes I'm on a very high height and I will feel like I'm up high, even though it's just a game. Mm -hmm. So your mind creates, and it's really like the a God-like quality that we have because God created all of us with the power of his mind, so to speak. I know that's kind of simplifying in terms, but he yeah. thought of all of this before he created it. And so we also have the ability to think about things and bring them into existence. And so if you think something, your feelings will follow suit to what you're thinking. But if you change your thinking, you will change your feelings. And so um, I'm interested in, in your perspective on that. Well, for one thing, before I even start, yes, 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 and a huge yes to everything you just said. Mm -hmm. Because emotion are always a result of our thought patterns. Exactly. Never anything more. Exactly. However you have have been trained to think is however your emotions will respond to whatever happens to you. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't think neither Miss Stephanie or I are trying to downplay the fact that that you have a right and you have a need to be with someone or be around people. None of us are saying that. Mm -hmm. But we are saying that how you handle that will determine how long that lasts for you. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. And the way you wanna you wanna handle loneliness is by recognizing that God. Listen, you know sometimes in so I've I've heard young young people especially say, you know what, you're a half a heart, I'm a half a heart. We came together, we made one heart. You know, you're fifty, I'm fifty. We'll come together, we'll be a hundred. Listen, no one should be with a fifty person. They ought to be with a hundred. <laughs> Nobody wants to be with a half a person either. Mm, mm. God made you whole and complete. God made you 
in and of yourself self-sustaining. Mm. If from that position you choose fellowship, and again, fellowship at different levels, meaning different things, mm-hmm. if, if you choose from understanding that I am complete and now out of my completeness, I choose to connect with, Listen, man, not only will not only will you enjoy that relationship more, but they will benefit from you and you will benefit from them. Exactly. Exactly. You see, if, if people enter into any kind of relationship simply because they need something from that person, it will that relationship won't last long anyway. And I'm talking exactly. even about friendship. I'm mm. not even talking about I'm not even talking about romantic relationships, even friendships. Mm. We've all had that one needy friend. Or maybe two, you know. <laughs> or been that needy friend ourselves. Or been that needy friend or, ourselves. Or maybe we've been that needy friend yeah. ourselves, you know. Yeah. Mm. And it burned everyone else because we just kept needing them to do something for us. Mm. And so that's what I love about this, this that we're talking about. Because you are talking about relationships. That's what this show is about. Mm-hmm. So when we're talking about loneliness, we're going way beyond romantic relationships. We're just talking about everyday relationships, common exactly. office, friendship, church relationships. Exactly, yeah. Because how you are in one thing is how you are in everything. Mm. And, and when, people, when people have that, and again, it goes back to what we talked about. Do you feel like they are the answer to your loneliness? Because mm. if you do, guess what? You're going to be drawing on them plenty. Mm, mm. That will be a problem. Sooner or later, that's going to be a problem. Mm, exactly. Wow. So, um, so what, one thing that I was thinking, like, you know, in reference to what you were saying is that um, a lot of people, and again, it took me time to get to this point, that God has everything we need. He never really designed us to get the things that we need from other people. Um even when, like some people say, you know, that they feel like their husband or wife is supposed to feel, or a friend or anything, supposed to feel a certain need for them, that only, if you look at the way that God originally intended for things to be, everything still came from him. It wasn't necessarily those people, because if we all stay connected to God, he was yeah. the one feeding everything that we need. And so it's it's yeah. like in our fallen state, we have taken God out of the equation. And now we think that those things come from people when right. they were never meant to come from people in the first place. Right. And right. so when you expect people to feel certain things in you, you're actually going to the wrong source. That's not where you get that from. And right. and, and with what yeah. Dr. Tan is, is explaining is that you will be disappointed because those people simply don't have the capacity like, we are all in the same boat when it comes to needing things and being dependent. We're all meant to be dependent on God. So you can't go to another person that's deficient to get what you need um, when they don't have it. So, but God has it and he has everything we need, everything we were meant to be uh, get from the relationships with other people. It's not like when those relationships fail, when it comes to our fallen nature, that it's like, well, too bad you guys, you guys sin and you you don't get what you need now. No, we can always go back to the source. And right. yeah, go ahead. Well, I was I was gonna say, look, if you think about this, and, and again, I'm purposely taking this to the extreme because I'm trying to jar us into attention here, okay? Mm-hmm. But if I have a problem with my own company, why would I think you would enjoy my company? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I have a problem being with myself, why do I think you would enjoy being with myself, with mm-hmm. me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. See? Mm-hmm. And I think that you have to have that understanding that, again, and again, no one is saying that you ought to live life all alone and have no one with you. That's not what we're saying at all. We're yeah. trying to get a proper perspective of that. Mm. Companionship is ought to be from a position of enrichment mm. of you already recognizing who you are, what you are. Mm. And from the you, you, you mingle to enrich. Mm. Mm. Not for you to draw from continually in a one way. Because that's what's going to happen. And when you understand that, you know, I, I enjoy being with myself plenty. Mm. And, and when, you, when you've learned to enjoy being with yourself plenty, you also learn to enjoy being with people plenty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because then when you're, and here's what, what happened with me, 
when I look, and I, I told, I've said before in the last show, I'm actually pretty shy. You know, if I, if I was in a room and I wasn't speaking and no one knew me, I guarantee you I'd be seated at the back. Mm. Last row, near the exit too. Mm. <laughs> um, but what I have found is that the more I have been comfortable with me, and boy, Miss Stephanie, you are right. It is a process. Mm. Mm. You don't receive Jesus on Sunday night and wake up Monday morning just everything perfect. It's a process. You learn this. You're undoing what has been done. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I learned to love me the way God loved me. That he saw me as complete. That he saw me as whole. That he saw me. And not only did he see me there, but he's actually with me. Mm. Mm. Did you know that, that John 16 specifically, Jesus specifically said, I will leave you another helper and I will not leave you as an orphan. Mm. Mm. <laughs> in the Jewish mindset, the orphans were the lowest of the low in society. Mm. Mm. And he said, I'm not going to leave you orphans. You're, you're not gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, I'm going to be with you. Mm. Mm. The more I understood that, yes. it's something for me, Miss Stephanie. My confidence, mm. how I saw myself, mm. I, I thought, well, I couldn't be all that bad if 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 if, if he's with me. Exactly. <laughs> I couldn't be this. I couldn't be this. I couldn't be this little thing that nobody would ever want to talk to or be with. I mean, how bad could I be? Because if he's willing to talk to me, if he's willing to be with me, there's got to be hope for me. Exactly. Amen. Amen. And oh. so, hey, listen, everyone. If there's hope for me, if there's hope for me, Stephanie, there's hope for you guys too. Exactly. Wherever you're watching, there is hope for us. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And the more whole I was, the more complete I was, the easier it became for me to be with people. Exactly. Mm. And when I say be with people, I mean just literally be with people. Mm. Mm. I do a lot of coaching, as you know. I receive a lot of coaching, and I do a lot of coaching, as you know. Mm -hmm. One of the little exercises that we, that down the coaching program that we talk about with people is that we, we bring them through a process of how they can be still with themselves. Mm. And where they're just comfortable with themselves. Mm. And boy, when you learn to be comfortable with you, your mind thinks clearer, your emotions are stabilized, and your body is relaxed. You know? Yeah. So, it, okay. Go ahead. My, my plug. Be happy with you. Yeah, and it goes back to what you were saying because it still comes, everything is a reflection of what you think about yourself. And so... When you're comfortable with yourself, you're going to naturally be comfortable or more comfortable with other people. So it really all comes back to yourself, but and the mind. So, but one thing that I, I think is important to point out in what you're saying is that, you know, a lot of the times people think that they're lonely and that if they find somebody who cares or they get in a relationship, that it will help them. But really, um, something that we've kind of, you know, scratched the surface of a little bit is usually those are signs of deeper issues that need to be addressed. And so, yes, you can't go get it from another person. And so you might say, well, then what am I supposed to do if I don't have another person to get it from? You actually have to deal with yourself because those feelings are usually coming from something. So we talked about the thoughts, how your thoughts kind of generate your feelings. But you think you think certain things for a reason, and they usually come from your experiences and things like that. So you really have to get to the root of why you think that way. You know, again, it can be like, you know, maybe you had a bad upbringing, or you were abused, or you know, things of that nature. I'm sure, Doctor Tan, you can kind of tune in, uh, pick, you know, chime in on some other reasons that those feelings might be where those feelings might be coming from, but they are usually signs of deeper issues, which is what God wants to help you deal with. Like he doesn't just want to put somebody in your life because that's a band-aid solution. And God does not do band-aid solutions. I wish he did sometimes, honestly. But... All of us, all of us, all of yeah. us. But he doesn't do band-aid solutions. So he's going to get you to a place where actually some solitude is helpful for you to deal with what's actually going on inside of you. So what is your take on that? A lot of loneliness and ideas of loneliness and concepts of loneliness um, comes from a place of rejection, of a fear of rejection. Mm. Mm. Again, have you noticed how children, when they're, when they're small, they're young, they can be playing with a cardboard box all by themselves and entertain themselves for five hours and don't, don't, don't think nothing of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. 
somewhere along the line, we were either taught that we have to be with someone to be complete, mm -hmm. or we were rejected by someone. And in that place of rejection and hurt, we started grabbing for more. Mm, mm. And in grabbing, we lost what we had. And the more we lost, the more we grabbed. And the more we grabbed, the more we lost. Mm. And that led to a panic of, oh my goodness, now I'm all alone. What am I going to do? Exactly. Mm. So rejection, you cannot talk about loneliness and not talk about the fear of rejection. Because mm. those two psychologically and spiritually go together. They're the same thing. Mm. They're the same thing. Mm. By the way, religion is, is a lot of religion. And by religion, I don't mean relationship with God. But a lot of religion comes from a place of a fear of rejection. Mm. Wow. 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 Think about it. Think about the things that people will do for a religion so that they will not be rejected by God. Mm. Wow. Wow. Mm. So, and people, again, people are the same way with relationships. Mm. If I were thinner, taller, bigger, brawnier, smarter, richer, whatever, maybe I wouldn't be alone. Mm. And so they try and do in order to have someone complete them, quote unquote, complete them. Mm. And the question ought to be, how, how long could you go on doing that for? Mm. How much taller do you have to be? <laughs> how much muscles have to be bulging out through your shirt for that to be? Mm. If you're rejection. So at some point in life, and again, this is psychological, at some point in life, in the past, either, they were either told that, they were either thought that you have to be with someone in order to be complete, or they were rejected by something. And then now try and make up. For it. And mm. both of those, you can overcome with God's word, and you can overcome with God's spirit, and you can overcome with being around people who believe in you, and helping you. Just like this podcast right here, just like this show right here. What, what, what? We're telling you some solid truth. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Wow. So one thing that, like, so we were talking about how spiritual that we were not designed to be alone, and it's very, very true. And so I think it's really important that you pointed out that we're not trying to dismiss that at all because it is a spiritual need. I did a, a, a blog post. Some weeks ago talking about, you know, we often talk about this, the, the needs of the body, but the mind has needs, the spirit has needs also. And so a lot of the time, because those things are out of alignment, this is where a lot of the confusion comes from. So people have a spiritual need not to be alone, but then their mind, because it's not connected to the spiritual knowledge that was meant to guide it, comes up yeah. with solutions as to why. Yeah. We are alone and what we can do to not be alone. But the problem always originates from the spirit and it yes. can only be solved in the spirit. And so you have to get to the root of those things that are kind of blocking that in you to really get to what's actually going on with yourself. Because, you know, the enemy really uses these things to kind of keep us yeah. blinded and deceived and kind of going in circles, so to speak, trying to come up with solutions, but God actually has a solution that we actually are craving and we don't all the time realize it. The solution is recognizing that God has chosen to knit us into the body of Christ. Mm. Mm. And that alone is a conversation worth having because the body of Christ is not just one 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 type of people it's all types of people mm. i like to say it this way at the cross humanity was was evened out mm -hmm. mm. at the cross humanity was evened out it doesn't matter it doesn't matter nothing matters at the cross we were all found one thing and his grace and mercy saved us mm. so he chose to knit us into the body because god recognized our need for fellowship mm. but he he puts us into the body after we've been blood bought and received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Why? Because once we are blood bought and receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are on equal footing and we all come into the body and God intends for us to mix and mingle. Mm. He intends for our minds to mix and mingle, our emotions to mix and mingle, and, and let me tell you, spiritually, our annoying things to mix and mingle. Exactly, yes. I had been on a previous show with you where we were talking about my book, Re Releasing the Miraculous, and mm -hmm. talking about spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. Interesting, but one aspect of spiritual gifts is that Paul teaches us in 1 Corinthians 12 
that the spiritual gifts are for the benefit for the profit of everyone else. Mm, exactly. <laughs> I am supposed to profit from your Miss Stephanie's spiritual gifts. Mm. So God intends for me to benefit from you, just like you're supposed to benefit from me. Mm. Now, of course, I understand we're not talking about just spiritual matters. We're talking about emotional matters, companionship. But the principle remains the same. Come into the body of Christ. And I, I can almost hear them even say now, well, don't you know I'm already going to church? Mm. I'm already ser serving. I'm already attending the singles fellowship. And I'm still attending the singles fellowship. What about that? <laughs> <laughs> don't go in there just at, the, just at the direct purpose of meeting a mate. Mm. Go in there to be a part of the body of Christ. Go in there to enjoy the fellowship, enjoy the word, enjoy the preaching, enjoy the prayer. Go in there to feed you. Mm, mm. Go in there to be nourished by the environment we call church. Mm, mm. Go in there to serve. Go in there to participate. And I'll guarantee you, I will get, as a pastor, I'm telling you, I've seen this. If you will come in that way, Something, someone, some group, some individual will find you and you will find them. Mm, yeah, <laughs> that's um, it was something that I was thinking of and it kind of slipped out of my mind. Hopefully it comes back. I usually try to take notes while I'm talking so I don't forget stuff. But I'm so into what you're saying that I didn't take my notes and I forgot. So um, but um. One of the things that I was thinking of, aside from the thing that I forgot, is that actually being alone is not possible. And, and you know, we have to like what you were talking about, change our perspective on things and have a more godly perspective of it. Because, again, if you think you're alone, you will if you believe you're alone, you will be you will feel alone. And then that will kind of reinforce itself. And then you'll think that, oh, you feel alone because you are alone, but, but you're thinking it and, you know, it gets all mixed up in there. But actually, the truth is we cannot be alone. Like it's not even possible spiritually because we are spiritual beings. And when you learn to see that, like what you were saying, that God, the body of Christ, we have each other as far as the body of Christ. But we also yeah. have the Holy Spirit, which will never yeah. leave us. The Holy Spirit is always there. Like God is always yeah. there. And so it's just a matter yeah. of you recognizing that he's there as opposed to now it's like. I have the image in my mind. Sometimes it's like you have a guest over to your house and they're sitting on the couch and they're yep. waiting to engage with you, but you not acknowledging that they're there. And you keep saying you're alone. Like the Holy okay. Spirit is always there. And so once you yep. acknowledge that and, and you learn to see God in that, you will realize that it's actually impossible for you to be alone. Yeah, it is. And again, why we say that is because God did not make you to be in some way deficient without. Mm, mm. So when God created Adam, he, he, he saw Adam as good and whole and complete. Eve was not made to complete Adam. Eve was made to add to Adam's completeness. Exactly, exactly. Major difference in how you see this. It, that's exactly. very different. Most people see it as I'm not complete until I have. Exactly. As, I'm complete and they're adding to me. Mm, mm. It's a different Major, relationship. Very different. And how you go into a relationship will be how you act it out. Mm. So again, if you go into any kind of relationship and like, I need you, you're going to complete me. You're, you know, uh, and, and everything else. Boy, I tell you, you're going to be drawing on them a lot. And probably even more than they can afford to give you. Because, by the way, this need you have for companionship, like Miss Stephanie was saying, is spiritual. Mm. And, it, and it cannot be met by any one person. Mm. Mm. Exactly. And, and so, again, go ahead. in the relationship context, real quick, you see this. Not only do you see this in marriages where people are alone, but you also see this in marriages where people... Remain married, but one or both are not maybe the most faithful to their marriage because they continue to go on seeking someone else, something else. Mm, mm. And in those situations, it's not even really about being alone. It's just that they don't feel, they don't understand the completeness of things. Mm. Well, 
you talking about relationships quite a bit. I love it more than the whole lonely part. So I'm gonna. <laughs> no, it's fine because it's still about relationships, and so you know these type of things affects our ability to have healthy relationships and things like that. So it's definitely um, a part of the conversation. But one thing, the thing that I was that I forgot that I now remember because I have my pen, I wrote it down. Um, <laughs> Um, is that you, so some people think that when you become a Christian or you really, cause okay, with the conversation that we're having people, it's easy for people to get the impression that, that you, it's just a switch that you can turn on and be content and all that, but it doesn't happen that way. It's a process. And they also think that God is going to like magically, or maybe even they don't want the feeling to be taken away that the feeling of loneliness and all that stuff is going to go away completely. Um, in my experience, that's not the case. But what happens is that God takes the edge off of that. So you yeah. don't feel compelled to do some certain things because yep. you're lonely. So how do you see that? Perfect. I see it exactly that way because God takes I, I love that phrase. God takes the edge off of it. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Because that tells me that you can be in the same situation, but it's not cutting you as much anymore. Exactly. You know, and again, you have to understand that most people develop whatever thought processes they have through life. Mm. So if you're 30 years old, you've had 30 years of that thought process in you. Mm. And you are now relearning that. And that's why the scriptures tell us Romans 8, Romans 12 tells us to renew the mind. Exactly. So to the world there is a process of renewing our minds so that we're not stuck in this little process of this is how it is and Mm. how it will always be Mm. so loneliness and and again do everything in the natural you know you ought to go be a a part of a good church go hang with your friends when they when they call you or hey if they don't call you call them you know do everything within the boundaries of godliness and contentment Mm. Mm. Everything within the boundaries of what Miss Stephanie was talking about, recognizing that you are whole, you are complete, the Holy Spirit's always with you. But on the other hand, God intends relationships in your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And with that outlook, that's how you how that's how you sail out into this thing we call the the relationship. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever that means, you know. Yeah, you. exactly. Because even relationships in and of themselves is a learning process. And that's why yeah. I kind of emphasizing that, you know, for people to take it easy, like you were saying, okay, if I'm doing all this stuff and I'm already going to church and blah, 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 and you say nothing's changing, I would say just continue to give it time because it is a process. And as much yeah. as as much as we might feel like we're waiting on God. 99.999% yes. of the time he's yes. waiting on you. And so yes. you need yes. to figure out whatever it is that he wants to deal with you in before you're yep. able to go to that next level. Um, be, and, but it is a process. So be patient with yourself, be patient with other, other people. It is a process and you just hang in there until you get the breakthrough that you're, that you're looking for. It might not come the way you expect, but it definitely right. will take the edge off <laughs> but I, and, I, and i also want to add while you're hanging in there while you're going on going on change how you're going on mm. don't go in with the specific purpose of finding someone yeah go again allow yourself in a social environment in church to be enriched mm. Mm. go in complete instead of go in looking for a piece to fit in somewhere, something, yeah. some, yeah. you know, when you do that, number one, there'll be a spring in your step. Mm. <laughs> one thing. Number mm. two, besides that, you're going to find out pretty quick that you're going to find out pretty quick. I'll guarantee you in any room that you're in, there is someone else feeling lonely as well. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh let's, oh, let's talk about this for a second. I used to think that I was the only one feeling what I was feeling. I never was. Mm. Mm. That's yeah. a lie of the enemy. That's yeah. a lie of the enemy to make you think that you're so special that you're the only one with those feelings. <laughs> right. And it, it encourages solitude. It's a, a, like a thinking yeah. of solitude. Yeah, it goes back to the same thing. Yeah. It's like, I'm the only one. No one else could ever feel this. I'm the only one in this room that's feeling all alone. Mm. No, you're not. There's people out there. Mm. There's people out there. And here's another way for you to look at this. 
And I'm trying to put out as many ways that we can look at this as possible. But here is another way to look at this, why you maybe haven't found a group or someone to, to, to just buddy up with right away. Have you ever considered that maybe God's protecting you? Mm. Wow. Yeah. Have you ever considered that maybe the ones around you right now that you so desperately want with, maybe they're not ideal for you right now? Mm. Mm. Have you ever maybe considered that maybe somewhere now God has prepared you a portion, a remnant of people to connect with and you all are in process of swimming your way to each other. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So I got to tell you, I don't always try and make things work because sometimes when things don't work as quickly as I think they ought to, that just could be God protecting you. Exactly. Exactly. And I can say even for myself, I used to, you know, really want friends because I'm a really big introvert, introvert and a loner and things like that. And I used to want friends and, you know, it was a period of my life, which I talked about being lonely. But if God had sent me those friends during that time, I would not have gotten as close to him as I did because I didn't have anyone. And so yeah. it really allowed me to, you know, because a lot of times we're using other people to kind of fulfill our voice that only God was intended to feel. Right. You're missing the opportunity to really bond with God. And so without that, I doubt that I would have come as far as I did with understanding loneliness and my reasons for feeling lonely and things like that. If I didn't have that time where there was no one there, like you said, God was protecting me and helping me to develop a relationship with him so that I didn't feel those same feelings that I was feeling. And so when I look back all the time, I'm like, yeah, that time I definitely grew with God in a way that I would not have if I had a bunch of friends and everything like that around me. So, yeah. Because I think sometimes when people are feeling, look, it's just like food. Like I try not to let myself get hungry before I eat because when you're hungry and then you go look for food, chances are you will drive through the first drive through you see. <laughs> right. You know, but if you approach your meals without being hungry, you're likely to make better choices. Exactly. Exactly. Same with relationships. When exactly. suddenly we get desperate to take care of this loneliness, we'll grab the first anyone to come to come by. And they may not be, they might just be drive through Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they might just be drive throughs They might not be, they might not be that organic home cooked meal that God has ordained for you. Exactly. Okay. I'm just you interpret that however you want to interpret that. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Right. So um I feel like maybe we should kind of go into a little bit about feeling lonely while you're married because a lot of what we're talking about is that people who are not, people who are kind of single and things like that. But this can also be an issue when you're married. So what is your what is your input on that? Oh man, um, feeling lonely when you're married can be a potential landmine mm. that needs to be addressed before you venture out deeper into the landmine. Mm. Yeah. Because if you, and again, I say it, but the truth is anyone who's been in any relationship has felt lonely in their relationship before. Mm -hmm. The issue is how you deal with it, the issue is please don't ever let me feel that. That's not going to happen. At mm -hmm. some point, you're going to feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not going to care enough. He's not going to call enough. She's not going to, she's not going to, she's not going to, at some point, it's going to be something like that. The mm -hmm. issue is how we deal with it. Mm -hmm. By the way, that's a principle of life. It's never, please don't ever let it happen. Is the issue is I'm training me so that even when it does happen, I can deal with it. Exactly. Yeah. When there is a, if you are in an official relationship, but you still do feel lonely. My question, if this was a counseling session, which I do, if this was a counseling session, my question would be how often, how deep? Mm. If you're saying it's, you know, ever so often they're away or I'm away or something and I feel lonely, I'm like, yeah, that, that's actually a good lonely. Okay. By the way, it's a good lonely, all right? Mm -hmm. But if you're telling me we're together all the time, and every time I look, I look across the sofa to see who's sitting there, I'm still lonely, mm. right? Then the issue tells me that that isn't an issue of loneliness. That, is, that, that tells me that's an issue of disconnecting. Mm. 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 
that means that at some point in some way that couple and i'm going to use the word couple that couple has disconnected from each other they're no longer hitched mm. Mm. now what do you do about that then you start here's the most basic thing you start looking for points of communication again mm. now that might seem basic and it is but it's basic for a reason it works mm. Mm. now when i get the opportunity i do do quite a lot of relationship counseling okay and this we always go back to this communication is key mm. The two things to a healthy relationship are you being full and healthy and then communicating. Mm. That's it. Mm. If we can have you, you're good for life. Mm. Now, the first part of the show, we talked about you, building you, being nourished, being complete, and all that kind of thing. The second part is communication. Mm. There are no relationships without communication. Mm. There is no fellowship without communication. Mm. Jesus came as an ex expression of the father's communication to us exactly yeah mm. now notice this jesus came to express communication in a way that us humans could understand mm. Mm. <laughs> right so don't communicate in a way that you feel and of course we've all read that book the five love languages mm. a very classic book but don't communicate in a way that you you understand but they don't mm -hmm. Mm. But I would bring it. I would bring it up to this one thing: communication. And if you tell me that I'm in the same room with them and I'm lonely, I'll guarantee you. I'll guarantee you, Jason, that, that popped in here. Yeah. You reconnect. Go back to when you all communicated last. Pick it up from there. Mm. You say, "Well, I'm a different person, and sh they're a different person, and so I don't know how to how do how do we connect now." That's why I say, "Go back to when you communicated last." Exactly. Last time you all communicated, sitting at Starbucks having a latte. Was the last time you all communicated taking a road trip? Was the last time you all communicated, whatever that means? Was the last time you all communicated with you doing the housework? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Do find where and how you last communicated. Now again, be wise, be gentle with this. Why? Because like you, like we all understand, you you are different people now. Exactly. Right. And mm. they and hey, let's put it this way: they may not want to communicate like they did with you twenty years ago. Mm. Mm. There may be new hurts. There may be new. You know what? I tried that. I don't want to. So you've got to find a way to communicate. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, communicate does not include criticizing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Communicate does not include shifting blame. Mm. Mm. It doesn't include finger pointing. It doesn't include I said, you said, we said, they said. Mm. Mm. It doesn't include if you would have done this, I would have done that. And if I would have done that, that communicate simply means I see you mm. and I want you to see me. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So it reminds me of that scripture, which I know is not necessarily used for marriage all the time, but it says, go back to what you did at first. And I think that means very, very simple advice, but anything that is um, broken down can be restored. If yes. you go back to what you did to establish it in the first place. And a lot of times with, with arguments and feeling lonely and pointing blame and things like that, it kind of clouds that, that original connection and it's almost like you have to kind of sift through all that stuff to get back to what you had in the beginning, to be reminded of what you had in the beginning and understand that that connection is more important than all the other stuff, all the other complaints, the hurts and things like that. And yes, hurt can be a big deal, but they're not as important as the connection. And it's really important to keep that in mind. Yeah. And, and again, yeah. We were talk we are now talking about if you are at the beginning of feeling lonely while in the relationship, mm. then your immediate go to is connection. Mm. Now, if you're further along in that landmine that we we're talking about, where you're in a relationship and for whatever reason you're still lonely, or if there is isolation, or if there is almost a, a pulling back and an abandonment off, 
the key is still communication. Mm, mm. But it may, may, you might not always change their mind. Mm, mm. Now, in that case, remember the two things we said. Number one, you're going to be whole. Exactly. Number two, you're going to communicate that wholeness. Exactly. And mm. that's, where, that's where it's going to come down to. Mm. But if you are just now starting to feel lonely in relationships, communicate. Find a way to communicate. Hey, mm. communication may be cooking his favorite meal. Communication mm. may be coming home early with flowers. Communication mm. may be going out just for a movie. Mm. All that communication. Because mm. I many times I'll deal with men and they're like, "Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know the words that she wants to hear." <laughs> Which is probably true for all men. <laughs> right. But she'll probably settle for some flowers and a fancy dinner. Right. Like, oh, she'll, start, she'll probably settle for you. She'll probably settle for waking up and finding out that you did the dishes and did the laundry. She'll probably, mm-hmm. she'll probably settle for that. Mm-hmm. As a start. As mm-hmm. a start. Mm-hmm. She'll probably settle for that. Because that's the way of communicating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that's important what you're pointing out is that communication is not always verbal. Like, it's, it's yeah. a spiritual thing. Yeah. Um, yep. to feel connected. And so you don't always have to know the right words or say the right things, but gestures and actions and behaviors and th- things like that can actually a lot of times speak much louder than your words. Yeah. Communication could be, communication could you be just you reaching out and putting your hand on her shoulder as you walk past her. Exactly. C- communication. Yeah. And if you will find a way to start, you will be able to rekindle that again. Exactly. Exactly. So Jason asked a question earlier, and I think this is a good place to try to answer his question. And we might have already kind of answered it a little bit, but you can kind of add to it if you want to. He says, how can you keep reaching out to those who continually reject your attempts for fellowship? Now, listen, if you're using if Jason, listen, man, if you're going to use that word reject and they're rejecting you, my question would be, why do you want to keep reaching out to them? Mm hmm. Mm. Because if they're rejecting you, listen, here's one thing I have learned about relationships and I learned the hard way. <laughs> when people show me who they are, I ought to believe them. Mm. 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 Straight up. Listen, if someone shows me that they cannot be trusted, I ought to believe them. Mm. Mm. If someone shows me that they don't want me around, I ought to believe them. Mm. Mm. If someone shows me that they intend to reject me, I ought to believe them. Mm. You understand? Mm. And so you you have to you have to you have to you have to weigh that. Now again, you may have a perfectly good reason, and 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 unless we know, you might have a perfectly good reason with being why you need to be around them. Mm. And if that was the case, Jason, I'm telling you right now, what you need to do is is weigh this carefully mm. because if they're just continually rejecting you listen man even in the job situation you wouldn't be applying unless there was an opening mm. now you can tell me that they they reject you and you go on doing it anyway but even then you can only apply when there is a job opening mm. exactly you know I see this other I see this other come in. Should we just go ahead and answer this, Miss Stephanie? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, you want me to read it? I can read it. Uh, go ahead and read it for us, man. Okay, so he says uh he I am two thousand miles away from the person I am considering being my significant other. What advice do you all feel would be helpful? Will be helping them feel I am still engaged and being down for our relationship. You know, I think back of the old days, which is definitely between before my time and before, before Miss Stephanie's time, when people could not FaceTime, Skype, <laughs> text, email. They had to do it the old-fashioned way of sending out snail mail by a postman that probably took three months to go anywhere. Mm, mm. Now, I, I'm not old enough to remember those days. I know Miss Stephanie's not old enough to remember those days, but do you notice that even back then, they did have relationships that way? Mm. Mm. They did it by the process of communication. Mm. Now, this particular question here, though, I like how I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how this is phrased because the question that Jason put in is that I'm 2,000 miles away from the person I am considering being <laughs> my other. 
So, Jason, if, if you're considering it, they might probably have to consider it too. Mm. And I'll guarantee you, if you're considering it and they're considering it, um, you're going you're gonna to both consider it together. Mm. <laughs> Your question might be, okay, I'm trying to get that person to consider it. How do I do it? You do it the same way we do right in the room. Mm. You find a way to communicate. Mm. Listen, I could be in this room right now with Miss Stephanie. We're in a we're in a we're in a we're in a, we're in a, a stream yard Zoom type of a room right now. Mm-hmm. But even in this room with just both of us, I could I could choose to just sit back and not not say much. Mm-hmm. And of course, Miss Stephanie, you do many shows, and I know you've got lots of podcasts all over the place. <laughs> no more than all of us probably in here. When you got you got guests come on, you're trying to connect with them. Yeah, absolutely. You, then you don't have any kind of show. Mm, exactly. Well, I also have some very uh, special experience in this area because my husband and I had a long distance relationship for years before wow. we got married. Um, he actually was in another country and I was in America and we had never seen each other. So, um, and so, yeah, I totally agree with you that it's basically the same thing. Just keeping that communication open and keeping that connection open. That's the only thing that sustains any relationship, whether it's long distance or short distance or anything like that, because the connection, that spiritual connection that we have, it crosses time, it crosses land, it crosses oceans. And so as long as you keep that connection, whether you're near or far, that is going to be the meat of the relationship. So, yeah. Listen, if you have someone 2,000 miles away and, and, and you're even considering it, they're even considering it, you all already have had some communication. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. no way you 2,000 miles away and you somehow trying to connect with You've already had communication. Just keep doing that. Exactly. Exactly. Just keep exactly. Doing that because that's all that's available to you right now is you all 2,000 miles away. Yeah. Yeah. So the last thing that I want to touch on before we wrap this up <clears throat> is something that you said before about Well, Jason asked the question of like repeatedly being rejected and then maybe you're in a marriage or relationship and the other partner is not um, being reciprocal in your attempts to fix the communication. And what I what I was wanting to point out is that and you did a little bit is that wholeness is a very big part of dealing with that the right way, Um, because a lot of the times if you're not whole and you're looking to for them to feel something in you or you're in a relationship where you're being repeatedly rejected and you keep dealing with that because that's usually a sign of a deeper issue. Like, cause yeah. most healthy, healthy, mentally, emotionally, spiritual people are not going to remain in situations where they are continuously being rejected. And so that's why I think wholeness is a very, very big key to even having healthy relationships because they right. will determine if you deal with the relationships to make them worse or if you deal with them to actually make things better. Yeah. Right. Totally. And you can say that before marriage, you can say that during marriage, and in some cases, you can say that after marriage. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's about wholeness. It, it, it's about recognizing, appreciating, and being comfortable with, with, with this self mm. that then allows you to communicate and share and participate in life with everyone else. Exactly. And we talk about such a vast array of aspects of loneliness which i love i really do love it mm-hmm. but it all comes down to me self and communication exactly really what it is and if people are in a state where they are continually rejecting you check up on your communication with them mm-hmm. are you communicating in a way that they can comprehend you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. check up on on that because if they're not understanding you it doesn't matter how much how much and what you're saying, mm. you know? Mm. And by the way, can I put in a plug? Because I know you, Miss Stephanie, do, do a bit of relationship coaching. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's why a relationship coach can help you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll put in a plug for Miss Stephanie right now. I know she does relationship coaching. Here's why. You see, I preach in many foreign countries. And by the way, I don't speak any language except English. This is the only language I speak. So every other country I go to, regardless of what great and wonderful things God has me say, I actually have to have an interpreter to translate what I'm saying. Mm. 
can I tell you all that sometimes people come to a stage in their relationships where no matter what good and glorious things they have to say, that other party no longer hears them and we need an interpreter to come in between us and with one ear do this and then with one mouth do that to the other person. They need to become a relationship whisperer. Exactly. So, <laughs> you need to know when you need to get help. Yeah. You need to, I've done a lot of I've done a lot of this. I know Miss Stephanie does a lot of this and is still doing this. Mm. That's where people like Miss Stephanie, you ought to just give her a call and say, Hey, I've got this situation. Can you help me with it? Yeah, yeah. And I do um do uh free sessions. So if anybody is interested in taking advantage of that just to get a taste for what I can help you with, then definitely sign up for a free session. You can do so on my page, there's a calendar right there. Facebook uh, does that now. So you have a calendar where you can schedule appointments. So just look into that if you're interested. Um, one thing that I wanted to wrap up with again, I know I said the last thing, but I think this is important, is that it all comes back to your relationship with God. Like you can't be comfortable with who you are. The way that you do that is through your relationship with Christ. And so your relationship with God, he can help you understand yourself, why you feel things, why you want things, why you like things. And then once you get comfortable with that within yourself, that is what kind of spills over into your ability yeah. to have relationships. So God is still at the center. He's the source of everything. Um, right. And when we really want to grow in ourselves and our relationships. God is definitely the key. So did yeah. you have anything else you wanted to add before we sign off here for today? Listen, man, we said a lot of things today. And I know it's going to cause a lot of questions, but that's good. We want you to be able to see these programs and think. Mm -hmm. think it out and talk it out mm -hmm. the key is you being fulfilled in you yourself and communicating that mm -hmm. and people will have confidence in you when you communicate from that position mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got no confidence in someone that, 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 that comes across unsure of themselves right, right. but that can change know yourself, be comfortable with yourself because God made you that way and they learn to communicate that. Exactly. Well, this is really, really good. And like you said, we could go in a lot of different ways, but you guys can reach out to me or Dr. James Tan if you are interested in doing that. His link to his page is should be somewhere in the comments. If it's not, I'll make sure I put it there. Also, if you want to do sign up for a free session with me or even just ask me a question, you can also do that on my page. But thanks for tuning in to this special segment. That's, uh, let's talk about relationships where we talked about loneliness and um, I will be back with another special program um, soon. So thank you guys for tuning in. Have a good day. Bye. Hey.